Welcome back to DIY My Way. I have absolutely loved having a backhoe for my tractor. And it didn't take long for me to realize the value of having a thumb on that tractor. So some many videos ago, I added a mechanical thumb from Be Expanded. My Be Expanded backhoe thumb has been just great for moving big rocks, grabbing piles of branches, or even big logs. The problem is I have to get off the tractor to set the position of the thumb, and I've gotten tired of doing that. I want to caution you that this is not a how-to video, but rather a how-I-do video, intended to inspire your inner creative genius. Proceed at your own risk. Also, working with hydraulics can be dangerous if proper safety precautions are not taken. Failure to do so may result in chaos, death, and destruction. So finally I decided it was time to go hydraulic. And a project like that involves buying a good bit of hydraulic gear. Right here. And by here, I mean Summit Hydraulics. They're a great source for all kinds of hydraulic parts and entire kits. There are a number of different ways to go about this project, and I'll cover some of the other options shortly, but I chose to adapt one of their universal third function kits for maximum flexibility. The 15 gallon per minute kit will be more than enough to handle my tractor's 6.3 gallons per minute hydraulic system. I chose the 3 8 inch body ISO 7241B couplers, which are agricultural style couplers matching my tractor. And I chose to include the fittings because I knew I could make use of some of them. If you have a bunch of fittings sitting around, you may not need them. I also ordered some other fittings and hoses from Summit, which you'll see in a moment. So let's see what we have in the box. I'll spare you from a real-time unboxing and speed it up a bit. The kit includes heavy-duty zip ties, big hose clamps, a coupler mounting plate, a third function valve mounting plate, a manifold block, a two-button joystick knob, the extra fittings I ordered, two eight-foot hydraulic hoses, and a three and four-foot hose. The fittings they included in the kit, wiring harness, and the star of the show, the third function valve solenoid. And of course, instructions. There's a link to this kit in the video description. To figure out the specs of the hydraulic cylinder I'll need, I take a couple of simple measurements. The first is the retracted length of the thumb, measured from the center of the two pivot pins, which in this case is 18 inches. Then I extend the thumb to its fully extended position and take the same measurement, which is 28 inches. The difference between the two is 10 inches, which is the stroke length of the cylinder I will need. Next comes the all-important choice of a hydraulic cylinder based on the measurements and other considerations I'll talk about. For a hydraulic thumb project, the best type of cylinder is a double-acting cylinder. Double-acting cylinders have two hydraulic ports. One extends the cylinder rod when hydraulic fluid is pumped into it, and the other retracts the rod when hydraulic fluid is pumped into it. Now I have to choose the mounting style of the cylinder. The most common type chosen for this type of project is the cross T-cylinder, but I chose to use a Tang-style cylinder. The reason is that the ports on a cross T-cylinder are typically oriented 90 degrees to the bore end mount. This means that the ports will either be straight up and facing the backhoe dipper where there usually isn't room for the fittings and hoses to connect, or straight down where the fittings and hoses have the greatest risk of damage while digging. To solve this problem, you'd have to cut the mount off and weld it back on parallel to the direction of the hydraulic ports. Also, you'd likely have to add a spacer between the mount and the cylinder to give enough room for a fitting to clear the dipper stick pivot pin mount, which was my case. This modification is what I saw done on several YouTube videos I watched. I did not want to instantly void the cylinder warranty by making such a modification, which is why I chose a Tang style cylinder. The Tang cylinder has the ports oriented parallel to the mounting pin hole, meaning it will face out either side of the dipper stick. 
Also, the distance between the extend port and the mounting pin hole gives ample clearance from the dipper stick pivot pin mount for a fitting and hose connection. No modifications to the cylinder are needed and the warranty is not voided, so the choice was clear. The Tang cylinder wins. Remember those measurements I made? Now they come into play. I need a cylinder that's close as possible to those measurements, and a model of Tang cylinder from Magister Hydraulics comes close enough. The retracted and extended lengths are 19 and 29 inches respectively, which is just one inch more than ideal, but I tested it with a mechanical thumb and it, and it won't cause a problem. It simply means the thumb won't retract quite as far and will extend a little farther. It has a stroke length of 10 inches, which is perfect. Now comes the decision about bore and rod diameter. A cylinder with a smaller bore and rod diameter of, say, a bore of 1.5 inches with a rod diameter of 1 inch will move faster per GPM of hydraulic fluid, but will be less powerful than a cylinder with a 2 inch bore and a rod diameter of 1.25 inches. I thought it wise to match the thumb cylinder specs as close to the bucket cylinder as possible and still fit the space. The bucket cylinder has a 2.17 inch bore and a 1.38 inch rod, so the 2 inch bore and 1 and a quarter inch rod diameter of this Magister cylinder is a good match. Also, it should operate at a similar speed as the bucket cylinder, which I prefer. The distance between the tank pin hole and the extend port is 2.68 inches, which gives plenty margin between the port fitting and the dipper stick pivot pin mount. The width of the tang and rod pin bushing are 1.5 inches. The pin holes are 1 inch, which is fine for the tang ends since that's the size of the pin used to connect to the dipper stick pivot pin mount. But the thumb end uses a 3 quarter inch grade 8 bolt as a pivot pin, so I'll need a bushing or sleeve to adapt it. Plus some additional modification to the thumb will be needed as you'll see later. I also noted that the hydraulic ports are SAE number 6 O-ring boss connections, which tells me the type of fittings I'll need for the cylinder. Finally, I note the push force of the cylinder at 2500 PSI, which is what my tractor's hydraulic system can produce, is 7,850 pounds, and the pull force is 4,780 pounds. Plenty for my back -othon. I ordered the Magister Tank Cylinder on Amazon. There's a link to it in the video description. Now it's time to make sure the cylinder will fit, while there's still time to return it if I miscalculated the dimensions. First, I have to remove the mechanical extender. Then I attach the cylinder to the dipper stick. The tang width is one and a half inches, and the space between the dipper stick pinholes is slightly more than two and a half inches. So to keep the cylinder tang centered, I put two one inch ID by one and a half inch OD by one half inch thick steel spacers on either side. Put the retaining bolt back on just hand tight for testing. I used the thumb pivot bolt to rotate the rod connector so that the grease circ is better protected from damage. I slide the bolt part way on followed by a 3 quarter inch ID by 1 inch OD by 2 inch long spacer. Then push the bolt and spacer through the rod and connector pin hole. When the rod connector is centered on the bolt, there's two and a half inches on either side. To keep the rod connector centered and provide structural support for the bolt, I will add two three quarter inch ID by one and a half inch OD by two and a half inch long spacers on either side. Welded to the thumb with some gussets for extra support. I loosen the protective caps on the hydraulic ports to allow air to flow so I can test the range of motion of the thumb. Looking good. It doesn't retract quite as far, but it will work fine. And it extends a little farther, which may come in handy in some situations.
That's enough for part one. Stay tuned for part two, where I plumb up the new hydraulics and modify the thumb for the new cylinder.